Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. My name is Royal Keith and today we have a very exciting one. Today we're going to learn how you can create the most realistic AI UGC content on the market. We recently posted a video on this on social media and it's safe to say that it performed extremely well. So let's take a look at how realistic we can get it and then we're going to teach you exactly how you can do the same in today's video. Oh my god, guys, do you ever just stop and realize how far AIs actually come? Like, it's insane how normal this feels now. Like, I remember when it used to be just little short clips, right? But now it's full videos, the face looks real, the voice stays kind of consistent, everything just works. And the craziest part, I can literally hold products, talk about them, move them around, like I'm actually filming this myself. So that's right, in today's video you're going to learn how you can create those longer style AI UGC videos with a consistent voice, consistent character character and location. We're also going to learn how you can go into the deep depths of character design, location design and voice design all in today's video. I've also left a PDF document in the description and you can see a preview of that right here. And this is basically just going to teach you all of the step-by-step -step process that you can use. And we've even got a couple of prompts in there so you can use that to follow along. So to get started, you want to head over to Arcads and this is the platform that we're going to use to create this realistic AI UGC all the way from image to to video creation. I also leave a link in the description to Arcad so you can click that as well. It'll be the first link in the description. So now that you're following along with me, we can go to login at the top right. And this will take us to a login page where you can either sign up or you can log in if you already have an account. Once you are signed in, you will have a similar user interface to what I have right now. Now, if you want to start a brand new project, we can click at the top left and just start a new project here. And then we can go into uh, the prompt bar here. So you'll see that we have talking actors, video, image, and see more. If you click on see more, you'll basically be able to see all of the different video and image models that they have in here. They have things like skin enhancers, they have things like background removers, fashion try-ons, etc. This is an entire package for AI UGC, specifically on Arcads. So it's a really great tool. Tool. To get started though, we're going to go over to the image section and this is basically using Google Nano Banana Pro to design our character here. And first things first, we actually have to do some character design. Now I like to use Pinterest and try and find characters that I, you know, first of all, like the location of or the style for example. Um, and I actually really like this image here. So if I wanted to recreate something similar, we can go ahead and download this image and then we can use our own custom uh, prompt builder. And I'm gonna show you one that we actually have inside GenHQ. This is my creative AI education platform. We've got 1.2 thousand members in it and we essentially teach people all the best creative AI education. Now in here, we actually have a resource which is a prompt uh, like an image prompt helper. And this is a large language model that we've trained based on specific data, which will give you the perfect prompt structure. So what you can do is you can upload any image that you have into this large language model. And then um, when you hit submit, it will extract all of that data in a really nice formulaic prompt. Now it's what it uses something called tokenizing and you can see here it's tokenized everything into the squared brackets. So we've got things like photography, high angle selfie, and then it details what the subject looks like, what the subject's wearing, um, the lighting, uh, the background, all of the details we can copy and we can go back to Arcads. Now we can paste this prompt in here and you'll see that it's now kind of tokenized everything. So we've got bedroom with hardwood floors, um, pink accents, makeup scattered on the floor, We've also got a uh, wide angle lens and we've even got the specific camera lens here as well. We've also got a film stock in here. Now, if you don't know about film stocks, film stocks basically allow you to target very specific imagery or styles of imagery. And it's something that we call latent space. And I'm going to introduce this concept to you now, because when you generate images or videos, all of these video models and image models are basically trained on a bunch of different data. Now, if we wanted to get access to a very specific set of data within that massive pool of data that these image and video models have, we essentially have to use prompting for it to reference and to kind of poke at very specific parts of uh, the video or image model. So if I'm using Google Nano Banana Pro and I wanted to access a very specific style of image by using a film stock, it's only then going to reference similar images that have a similar uh, 
kind of look to it because the film stock has a, uh, you know an individual look and you can go ahead and look at different resources we've actually got some in Gen HQ that teach you about all of the different film stocks and what you know kind of visual they'll give you from cinematic film stocks um, to actually army grade film stocks that they use in the army the um, like infrared cameras that give you beautiful imagery as well so you know all of these things will basically allow you to access very like um, like small parts of the data in, in the whole uh, image model. This will basically just poke and target at very specific parts of the image model. So this one is going to poke at the Kodak, um, you know, the Kodak Porter 400 image stock here. And by doing so, we're basically tapping into this very small bit of data here. So it's now just going to pull images and references from that small section. So now it's uh, going to give us a very specific look to our image. And that is basically what we call latent space. It's that small part of the space inside of the image model. And we're basically attacking that space. So now this is going to give us three different outputs here. And I'm going to run this a couple of times. It's just so that we have, uh, you know, a wide variety of images to kind of pick from here. Additionally, once we've generated these images, we may have to go through some rounds of iterations to make sure that we have the exact image that we like. We can also take these images that we end up getting from this platform and we can bring it to Photoshop to clean it up to give us a better result. Because what we're going to do right now is we're going to build the foundation. The foundations is the start frame which is the first frame that we're going to use and then the second part is the end frame and we need to build both of those with consistency and I really like um, you know this kind of output that we're getting here you can also adjust the aspect ratio of your image here as well so you could either have a, you know portrait style um, imagery here or you could have traditional wide angle 16 by 9 as well um, all inside of Arcads. Now here, I actually think this one is probably the best so far. Um, so I'm going to download this one. Now, this is what we are going to call our hero image. So I'm going to upload this image back into um, our prompt bar here. And now we can just use basic natural language to basically change this to be whatever we like. Additionally, you could also go um, in here uh, and let's say we started a new chat here with Google Gemini or ChatGPT, it's kind of up to you. You can upload your image prompt in here and just say, write me five different camera angles where the um, camera that she's holding is on the floor, slightly angled up towards this creator here. On the floor, we can see like lots of makeup and it should stay consistent to the original image. Give me the prompt and don't generate me the image. Sometimes when you're using um, Google Gemini, it will try to actually like create the image instead of giving you the prompt because uh, Google Gemini has access to Google VO3 and also Google Gemini directly inside of the platform, like inside Gemini, it will automatically try and do that. So what we can do now is copy these prompts and we can just go back into Arcads and we can continually basically iterate from this and generate different camera angles. So we're just gonna go through here and copy all of these and obviously making sure that we have this reference image attached in the image section. And we're just going to replace the prompt over and over with a couple of these different variations. And we're then just going to pick the one that we end up liking the most. So we've actually ended up generating this one here. And I really like this so that we can go from the character kind of not looking at, you know, so we, we basically start here where the character's not looking at the camera. So now we've got the character and she's kind of like put the phone down. This is super realistic. Um, so I really like this one. I also think the composition of this shot is really nice with all of the makeup on the floor here. I think this is really cool. Now I'm basically just gonna continue to, as soon as I get like a new frame, I'm just uploading it in here to replace this hero shot and I'm just gonna iterate. So now I'm just gonna say uh, she starts uh, applying she let's say she holds like one of these things let's say she starts applying makeup on her face she is holding one of the makeup products in her hand 
Okay, so now we've also generated like her holding some of the makeup. So it's actually just a prompt that if she starts applying the makeup on her face and she is holding one of the makeup products in her hand. So now we've got like an image like that. We can also go ahead and change this so that we replace this new uh, image here for the image reference with this new image that we've created. And we can say um, she comes close up to the camera and shows her lips. Okay, so now we have all of our images, right? So if we take a look here, we've got basically from this, uh, to this, to this, to this, to this. So now we have all of our image assets and we're happy with them. We can now go to the video section. Now in here, or you can go to see more. If you click on see more, we're looking for Google VO 3.1, which is down here. So once you've got that, we can actually click on this button here and this acts as our start frame. So for our start frame, we can upload our hero shot that we originally created, which is this one here. And then for our end frame, we can upload this one here. We can actually then use a really solid prompt structure that we're going to then going to use for Google VO3. Now inside GenHQ, we actually have a perfect prompt structure that you can access for Google VO 3.1, and I'll show it for you here as well. So in here, we have the perfect prompt structure in the resources, and you will find this Google Doc. Now this is basically a full guide on prompting for Google VO 3.1, um, but there is a master kind of prompt uh, template in here. And the prompt formula looks like this. So we can tokenize everything again uh, down into specific things from shot description, primary subject, action interaction, dialogue, um, secondary elements, environments, technical specs, atmosphere, and audio context. Now you can go back into your large language model here, for example, and paste this in and just say, this is the template for a prompt that I would like you to help me write for Google VO 3.1. I don't want you to create a video, but I want you to help me write a good prompt. Now with this, um, I would like to then say, uh, exactly what I would like to happen in between these two frames here. So here we have the lady who is holding the iPhone on the selfie camera, and then we need her to put it down in front of her, right? So that's what we're gonna tell uh, this to do. I would like you to write a prompt where this female actress in her like mid twenties, who has a Southern SoCal Californian accent, um, and it's slightly deeper than than usual. Um, be specific about like her accent so that we can create reputable accents throughout every single prompt. Um, she is holding the camera on the phone and she places it down in front of her. She then covers her mouth um, and while she's doing all of that, she's talking to the camera and she's saying, oh my God, guys, you won't believe what I've just figured out how to do. It's insane. So now it's gonna take that prompt structure and then it's gonna write everything out for us. And you can see here, it says formulating prompt strategy, prompt strategy, and we can see what it's trying to do on the back end right here. Now I will also leave in the description the prompt structure that we use for um, our video, like the video structure for Google VO3. So you can also go and access that. So now you can paste your prompt into the Arcad's prompt bar like this, and you can just hit generate. Now I'm also going to generate a couple of other variations in here as well. So maybe we could start from this one here instead. So we'll start from that frame and then we'll end on the other shocked face, this one here. And then we could, we'll just do a manual prompt one as well. Okay, so here is our output. Check this out. Oh my God, guys, you're not gonna believe this. Like, oh my God. I literally just found this and I'm kind of freaking out right now. Okay, so that's really solid. So what we can do is we can download that and we can then go into Premiere Pro and we can just add that in. Now, obviously at the very start here, her eyes are totally messed up. So we can just simply skip in and skip this first part here. And we could probably just start it from here. Guys, you're not gonna believe this. Like, oh my God, 
I literally just found this and I'm kind of freaking out right now. So we've also done a couple more generations just because I noticed at the very end, you'll see here, it cuts from here to here in like a weird like hard cut because it's trying to get to that end frame that we provided it. And in order for us to get like really seamless videos, we actually have to make sure that the end of the video is the seamless part so that it can run. We can basically run our start frame and make sure that it runs seamlessly. And that is essentially all you have to do in order to build up your narrative. You can use start and end frame. So what if we now wanted to actually generate an image and then actually control this character like you can see right here? Well, I'm gonna show you how we can do that all inside of Arcads as well. So if you go into the see more section in here, you'll see that they've now newly added Kling 2.6 motion control. And that's because I was talking with Roman, who's the CEO, and he actually added this after we recommended it, which is great. It's as simple as adding your reference video in here and adding in a reference image in here. And then we can simply run this like so. And my best advice for this, by the way, is actually generate your image image first and once you've got the image and the composition you're happy with then you simply start recording your own video in a similar composition structure to whatever your image is. It's pretty damn impressive, right? So we can create images of our characters and we can actually style transfer over the motion of them as well. And that's everything you need to know about creating super realistic AI UGC actors. You can also do things like adding in Snapchat filters and things like that to make them look even more realistic if you wanted to, like we did on this social video here. So if you want access to all of the resources, you can find them in the description. You'll also find a link to Arcads as well so you can try it out for yourself. And if you have any questions at all, you can always join Gen HQ where we offer one-to-one -one mentoring with anything that you may need. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one and I'll see you guys in the next one.